Welcome to SuperXL Training and Coaching. My name is Steve Huang. In this video, you are going to learn how to do XLOOKUP with Match Type 1, which enables you to match items within a range with a single value, which oftentimes replaces the need to create those non multiple layers nested if formulas. And this works for both number and text. You can download the training Excel file from the link in the description below so you can practice along. This is the seventh video in the XLOOKUP Inside Out series. If you haven't watched the previous videos yet, you may want to go back to start from the first one so you have better understanding of this lesson. If you are going to practice along with the download Excel file, this file we're using is SuperXL7 XLOOKUP Match next larger. Here we have a table with 12 cosmetic numbers. And we know where they are because we have the postcodes. And then we want to find out how much we should charge for shipping to the customers on a per piece basis. Now in Canada, the postcode has a specific format. It starts with a letter, then a number, then a letter, then space, the number, letter, number. And for those postcodes starting with L and M, they're mostly within Toronto area. And for the postcode before L, they are likely to be east of Toronto and in the eastern province of Canada. And for those postcodes after M all the way to Z, they are west of Toronto and in the western province of Canada. Based on the postcode, we want to find out how much to charge the shipping fee on a per piece basis. And then on the left side, we have this small table to show for those customers whose postcodes are within the different range, there is a fixed shipping fee assigned to that. So for the first one, for those postcodes are from A0A1A0 all the way to l 5 h 7Y6, then we we'll charge a shipping fee of $6. And for those customers whose postcodes are within range from L5H7Y7 to M5E1E4, we we'll charge $3 per piece. And for those customers whose postcodes are within range of M5E1E5 all the way to M9Z, 1B0, we charge $5 per piece. And then for those customers whose postcodes are from M9Z, 1B1, all the way to Z9Z, 9Z9, we charge shipping fee of $7 per piece. So based on the postcodes, we know what shipping fee to charge. We have the table over here. And you understand each of those is for those postcodes within a range. Then this can be done by using the XLOOKUP function, either use a minus one match type or one match type, because both can match items within range with a single value. And now in this particular case, we are going to use this two range, this column C, the two range as a lookup range. And in this particular example, then we need to use a match type one. Now, let me create a copy of this sheet and let me get rid of this button over here and those tabs so I can draw on my screen. We are going to do a formula over here in the cell H14. And this formula will be X lookup. And you understand it has six arguments. And we understand the six argument is a search mode, the order to look up. And if we omit the sixth argument, it means look up in the order from first to last. In this case, we are going to do search from first to last, then we can omit the sixth argument. We are going to do only five arguments. Now, the first argument is, what are you looking for? We are going to look for this postcode over here, H1G2Y3. You look for that from where? From this range in column C, the two range, then the second argument range will be the range you're looking within. 
and the third argument range is a range to return the corresponding value. We are trying to return the shipping fee, which will be this range over here in column D. And then the fourth argument is the value to be returned if that match not being found in second argument value. And if we omit this argument, when that match not being found, you will get NA. For this example, we don't care the NA, I know we will have match, so we wouldn't experience NA, then I'm going to omit the fourth argument. Now the fifth argument is a match type, which you understand we could have 0, minus 1, 1, and 2. We have learned already the 0 and the 2 and minus 1. And this time we are going to do the 1. Just to recap, 0 means exact match, 2 means to match wildcard characters, uh, minus 1 will match exactly. When the exact match has not been found, it's going to match the next small item. But for now, we are going to do match type 1. Now, with match type 1, how does this match work? This is a rule. It's going to first to try to match this value exactly in second argument range. If that exact match is not being found in the second argument range, then it's going to match the next larger item. So it's going to match exactly first. If the exact match is not being found, then it's going to match next larger item. So we are looking for this H1G to Y3 in this range over here from C14 to C17. And you can see we don't have this H1G 2Y3 over here, then there's no exact match. Then this X lookup with match type 1 is going to match the next larger item in that list. Which is the next larger item? You may wonder what well, we have here a tax. There are no numbers. How can you tell which tax is bigger or larger than all other tax? Actually, Tax also have a sorting order. Now let me show you in the answer sheet on the right side. This is the sorting order for the text. Apparently A is smaller than B. B is smaller than C. So the order or sending order of from small to largest will be A to Z order. Now if you have mix of a number and text or even some other characters, this is the overall sorting order in all sending. The number will be before the letters, and those other characters will be after number, but before the letters. So that's the sorting order. That means in this range over here, the next larger item than H1G 2Y3 will be this L5H7Y6. Actually, all those four are larger than H1G. They're all after, because L, M, M, Z, all are after the H. But this L5H7Y6 will be the next larger item because otherwise it's much larger than that. So it's going to match this L5H7Y6 and then return the $6. Now this H1G to Y3 is in the range from A0A180 to L5H7Y6. Apparently the shipping fee should be $6 that give us the right match. Now, if you look for the next custom ID, L5H7Y6, we can see that's exactly the same as this L5H7Y6. So it matches exactly, then this will be the match. Then six dollars will be returned. Again, this postcode is within this range from A0A180 to L5H7Y6 because the from and to are inclusive. So $6 will be the right match. Now if you look for next one, cost ID number 3, postcode is L5H7Y7. Very much similar to the previous one, the only difference is the very last number is one number bigger than the previous one. We don't have the exact match in the range, then it's going to match the next larger item. Which one is next larger than L5H7Y7? That will be this M5E1E4 because this L5H7Y6 is smaller than L5H7Y7. 
and the next large one will be m5e 1e4 and then the three dollar will be returned as a matter of fact you can see from l5h717 to m5e 1e4 those other ones should be three dollars so this l5h717 is this one over here which is encoded in that range that give us three dollars which is perfect now if you look for next one l9h8c3 again we don't see the exact match in the range of column c over here then it's going to match the next larger item the next large item then this l9h8c3 will be this m5e 1e4 then it's going to return three dollars this l9h 8c3 is within range from L5H717 to M5E184, so $3 is perfectly fine, that's the right range. And now next one, M5E1E4, and that's exactly this postcode over here, which is included in this range, so that should be $3 too. So now you see the pattern over here, if we have postcode over here, that is equal to this or less than that but greater than the previous smaller one that will match this range over here based on our rule here using match type one to match exactly or next larger will give us exactly what we need we can get it done by using xlooker function with match type one and we don't need to use those very long many many layers of nested if formula now i also want to say we could do actually match type minus one too if the match type minus one we just need to use this from range as a lookup range instead of using this to range so when you practice you can try that to see how that works now let me demonstrate how this formula works let me go to the cell h14 i will do this equal sign xl then press tab to insert the function xlookup looking for this postcode by using my left arrow key to go there comma within this range of postcode f4 makes it absolute comma and then return the shipping fee range which is d14 to d17 so i'm over there with my left arrow key f4 makes it absolute comma the fourth argument I'm going to omit all other comma and then the fifth argument we are going to do match type one so one and then if I do all other comma then you will do the sixth argument which is the search mode the lookup order we are going to do first to last that means we can omit this argument actually in this case either doing one or minus one it does not have any impact because in this type of scenario you would not have any duplicates in that range over here if there are no duplicates looking from first to last last to first there's only one match the one being the next larger so it makes no difference only if you have duplicates then the lookup order would make a difference so now i'm going to backspace this comma and close the bracket so we are omitting the sixth argument with that enter that give me six dollars so that matches h1g 2y3 with that first one over here and give me six dollars and then copy the formula all the way down now i have the shipping fee for every single customers based on the postcode so this is how the x lookup works when you have match type being one again match type one is to match exactly if the exact match not being found, then it's going to match the next larger item. And the one and the minus one can complement each other. Sometimes, depending on the rule, you use minus one, sometimes you use one. If you haven't, I would really suggest you to download the training Excel file from the link in the description below. So you can practice with many different numbers, different scenarios, to make sure you fully understand how the match type one and minus one work. If you find this video beneficial, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. For any question you may have, please write your comment below and I will answer your questions. In the eighth video of the XLOOKUP Inside Out series,
you are going to learn how to do XLOOKUP as ORI formulas. ORI formula is very, very powerful. It takes you to a different realm, different dimension. I look forward to seeing you in the eighth lesson to guide you into the door of the realm of ORI formulas. Thank you.